I know, Christmas in July, and actually as I'm filming this introduction, it started raining. I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. I thought it would be fun to join with my fellow YouTubers and highlight some Christmas videos right at the height of summer. Watch closely and you'll spot the year that I did my filming. Look out for the gift wrap segment. Anyway, I hope you enjoy these 12 hacks and DIY projects. I'll show you how to make a pomander orange. And what do you do with those tiny little baubles which are just too small to put on your tree? I'll show you how to jazz up some church pillar candles by setting them inside mini wreaths. And you get in a pickle when you tie your Christmas bows? I've got a great hack for that. And how about wrapping paper? Do you love buying new or do you prefer recycling? And for a really quick arrangement, practically on the day, I used a vintage windowsill vase packed with moss and tiny baubles. Are you a washi tape fan? It's another way of bringing some festive cheer to some plain glassware. There's a segment where I show you how to set your table. I'm probably teaching you to suck eggs there, but in case you don't sit down for formal meals with knives and forks, there's a great way you can remember which way your fork and knife go. The final segment is how to jazz up a squashed artificial wreath. I'll show you how to fluff it up and add in some fresh greenery so your artificial wreath will look a million times better. I'm starting off with a fresh orange for my pomander and then I've got a dish full of cloves. I actually dropped the spice jar that these were in and it's smashed. So I've thrown the glass away and I've retrieved the cloves and I've got some um, pearl headed pins and a length of a Christmassy ribbon. So it's a red ribbon with some Christmas snowflakes on. And you can see me there, that I'm going to wrap the orange up like a parcel. The only problem is because you're wrapping up a ball is the ribbon slides off. So I use my pearl headed pins to hold the ribbon in place. So I'm choosing a red pin so it um, blends in with the red shade of the ribbon. And then I cross the top over exactly as you would do for a parcel and I attach another ribbon, another pin at the top. This is quite fiddly because I'm trying to stop the orange rolling around on my bench whilst holding the ribbon in place. So if you are doing this, it might be an idea to ask um, for an extra pair of hands, someone to help you. So I am attaching the pin in the other end and then coming back to the beginning. So I want to have my ribbon overlapping so I am going to trim off the excess and as you've seen I've taken out the first pin I put in so I'm holding everything down with my fingers trimming off the other length of ribbon to the right length and then reattaching the pin so I've got my sort of parcel wrapping over my orange and one pin in the top and one pin in the bottom. So the orange looks lovely at the moment and you could just place it in your fruit bowl as a, you know, a decorative item on its own. But what I am going to do is pierce the surface with my cloves. Now this takes loads and loads of cloves and um, is very therapeutic to do, but don't underestimate how much time it's going to take. You'll find it virtually impossible to pierce the cloves direct into the skin. So you can see me here with my kebab stick where I made a guide hole first of all, and then um, put the stick down, add in a clove, so you can see that it does take quite a long time. Make a hole, put my stick down, add in a clove and get going. And what I'm doing here is following the line of the ribbon. So it just means I'm making a purposeful placement of my clothes. So if I decide to give up part way through, it doesn't look peculiar. So I haven't just randomly dotted the clothes all around. So I've spaced my clothes out a little bit because it's, I've worked out that it's going to take me ages to do. But if you had all the time in the world, you could pack your clothes in really tightly together. So it's entirely up to you. So this is a really lovely project to make. The scent of the orange as you work is just absolutely lovely. Something you can do on a tray in front of you, in front of the telly, or um, sit down with a glass of wine, or whether you're doing it with your children, you know, gather around, do something community together over a lovely warm hot chocolate. I ended up just filling in one quadrant of my orange and then having a line of cloves around my ribbon. I 
I always seem to end up with loads and loads of these tiny baubles at Christmas time. They're too small to put on a Christmas tree and they flop around when you try and attach them onto um, a Christmas wreaths. So what I'm going to do here is to create my own picks. So I've got my um, mini baubles and my kebab sticks and really really simple DIY here take your hot glue gun and put a dab of glue actually what I'm doing here is taking out where I can is take out the little hanging plunger and putting a dab of hot glue into the sort of open mouth of the bauble and slide the pointed end of your kebab stick in and as you push the kebab stick to the other side of the bauble the glue sort of holds the kebab stick in place and go through doing that so on the red baubles i could remove the hangers but from memory with the green they were fixed tight so what i had to do was to put a dab of glue sort of underneath the hanging area and then aim my kebab stick in slightly more with slightly more precision really but it worked out nevertheless and go through and um, keep um, gluing and inserting your sticks these are very long so unless you're doing a, a bouquet of flowers where you're going to add in some baubles I did end up cutting down the kebab sticks to size and if you're going to put them into more conventional flower arrangements you could probably and um, glue um, the baubles on at both ends of the sticks and I would probably cut the um, other end to a fine point in order that it could go through the quite the small head of the of the bauble and there is a uh, job done and you'll see me now bringing in the ones that I made earlier for my next DIY I'm going to make a really simple but stylish candlestick so I'm using one of these Kilmer bottles with the shaped sides to it and the flip top stopper I just thought it looked um, you know really really could a bit vintage and um, would look really great on the side on the Christmas table or on the mantelpiece and I've got short sections of box here so this is a fresh evergreen greenery you could use silk flowers if you have them and then the hardest thing of all is try to feed them into the neck of the bottle because the leaves want to go the other way and you can see me there having to sort of um, bunch it together and then it sort of fans out when it comes to a rest so I've specifically chosen a candle here that fits into the neck of my bottle but if needs be you may need to take a sharp knife to shape the bottom of your candle in order that it um, stays in place and you can see me there wiping um, down the candle because my workbench is dirty and um, it's picked up some of the detritus from the side and what I'm using here is some white tack which is a, a blue tack but white and putting it around the base of my candle in order that it um, will fix and stay upright in the glass bottle and of course if you're going to be lighting your candles please do be candle safe as you don't want to have any accidents and um, it looks like I didn't need the candle fix in the end actually the white fix as my candle was exactly the right size so that's perfect job done For my next project, I'm going to make a mini wreath. Now, this isn't one for hanging on the front door. It's more of a decor piece. So to hang it up in place of a picture or from a door handle or a hook above a window. And you see me there, take the hoop apart and I'm using the complete inner circle. I then take some narrow festive ribbon and fold it in half and loop it through the um through itself and that becomes the the hanger or the the hook for suspending my door my ring i keep saying there door wreath because i'm so used to saying door wreath so you could use um, a pipe cleaner if you've got one to attach your greenery or um, if you have mossing wire to hand you can use that as well so i quite like the ring with nothing else on it if you were going really really minimal but what i'm doing here is adding on some bay so that's an evergreen it'll last really well it'll eventually dry out and i'm positioning it um sort of tip to tip at the bottom of the hoop just opposite where i have attached the ribbon and then you see me here starting off with my mossing wire i attach it around the hoop a couple of times and just give it a tug to make sure it's not going to go anywhere and then taking the fresh plant material wrapping it around the um, 
the stem of the bay there and I'm going in and out weaving out between the leaves so I'm not crushing them but if you are using a different kind of greenery conifer for instance you may decide that you want to um, bind over it so you've got more of a sort of sausage shape on there and when I'm happy with the fixing there and tucking in that last um, chunky bit of the stem there you can think about um, making your way around to the other side so you've got a mirror image of the greenery you've just added on so where I have got my um, stubby end I then put in the the cut end of the other bit of twig which I've measured to size so it is going to look equal and bending it around so the stem is slightly flexible and um, actually you see me there um, switching out that bit of greenery because I'd got I cut off the end of it so I wanted to have the nice bushy tapered end of the greenery so it looks more um, more planned and more intentional and then you continue on doing exactly the same thing wrapping carefully round in order not to damage any of the leaves so I will skip to the end and show you the finished product and when you're happy with the placement of the greenery, just tie off your wire and tuck it out of the way so it doesn't scratch you. And you can add more greenery if you like, it's entirely up to you. You could add extra decorations or another ribbon at the bottom. Shall I let you into a secret? Florists always cheat when they tie their bows. And it's they make the bows in two parts. So even if it looks like a really simple shoelace bow, They've been made in two sections. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So first of all, I'm going to make this really quite narrow, pretty snowdrop ribbon. Cut a length off and then with it in your hands, you need to cross it over. And I always say it then looks like a little fish. The body here and the tail is over here. And where the ribbon has crossed over, you want that to lie back onto the, the bottom section of ribbon and hold it with your fingers. And then with a second piece of ribbon, tie it off. So I'm using this much more, this much narrower ribbon. And if you lie that ribbon out, so you've got the cut ends together and the loop here. And if you put your ribbon over the loop and then thread these cut ends through, let's try and do that together. Oops. One, two, through the loop, like so. So cut ends, loose ends went through the loop and you pull it and pull it. So there it's holding, but we need to pull it even tighter so it cinches in the ribbon and really, really holds. So I'm going to pull it really, really securely and then tie that in a knot to hold. And that would be a sort of picture perfect ribbon that you'd then attach. You could put these on your Christmas tree, decorate presents, and normally cut away at an angle as well, just to stop the ribbon from splaying. So that's quite a, a skinny little ribbon and you might want to, to make a bow using wider ribbon and what I particularly like using at this time of year is this, it's a wire edged ribbon and it's quite forgiving. So again, I'm going to start off getting my tie ribbon. So that's my narrow ribbon and I fold that in half, matching up the cut ends and leaving my bow, my loop there I should say. So I'll leave that to one side and then with my wire ribbon, exactly the same technique and cross it over in front of me like so. And then when I've gauged how big I want the, the bows and loops to be, it's easier then to cut off the excess, move that out of the way. So the same thing, we've made that sort of fish shape with the body here and the tails going this way. And where the ribbon has crossed, you just let it lie straight back onto the, the, the flat piece of ribbon behind. And then because this is a wider ribbon, you can scrunch it all up. And don't worry about doing this because the wire edged ribbon will recover and you can reshape your ribbon afterwards. So here's my tying ribbon. 
Put that underneath the bow and with my cut ends thread that through the loop and pull really securely and that's what holds everything together so you want to make sure that's as tight as you can possibly go if it's at all loose the loops of your bow will work out work loose and your ribbon will fall apart and doing a knot on the back there and then because it is wire edged you can reshape the bows the loops and then decide how long you want the tails to be you could have them quite short quite long one longer than the other quite like the length I've got mine but what I will do is fold the tails in half and then cutting from the folded edge up and out towards the straight edge you then get a little fish tail and that really finishes the, the ribbon off makes it look really elegant so fold it in half from the folded end cut outwards diagonally to the straight edge of your ribbon and there you have a really beautiful ribbon there's some battery operated candles and the reason I've chosen this is I'm putting some natural materials around the bottom of my candle and you just need to be really sure if you're doing this project at home and if you're tempted to use real candles you just never leave your candle unattended because you could imagine after a few hours burning time it then gets onto the dry stuff at the bottom of the candle you're going to have a house fire so please be extra extra cautious I'm really pleased with these candles they're, they're real wax and then down right at the bottom there's a little night light and unfortunately the batteries need recharging so I can't show you how they glitter but they do have a little flickering flame what I'm going to do is to create in effect a mini dory for my candles so I'm taking some trails of ivy and wrapping them round my hand and then the spare piece at the end weaving in and out so you can whip that up in a matter of a few seconds and just tidy away these long pieces here and then slide that over your candle and you've got a decorative trim. Now I've, we seem to have bindweed absolutely everywhere in our garden which is a right pain and I've just pulled some out of a bush so it's, it's dried off and I thought actually wouldn't that be great if you could take a bindweed and again make something decorative out of it so I've pulled it into two bundles and attaching it end to end and then make a loop round so same technique for the ivy I've got a, a loop and some tails here and then to secure it wrap the tails in and out to hold everything in place actually it looks like I've created a tiny little bird's nest and again you have your candle like this and you can see my point here that you don't want if you're having a real candle these wild bits are just too close to where your naked flame would be but of course you could always trim it down a little bit or go for something slimmer and what I've got here if I started off already the same technique and I think this is probably Virginia creeper vine or you could use more of the ivy and take off all the green bits so you're left with a twiggy stem and make a much simpler less a much simpler ring and I'm going to slide the start of the ivy in there and the same thing just weave in and out and you could make this as skinny or as chunky as you like that. and again it's still got those twiddles up here and again as I keep saying the reason why you shouldn't um, I prefer using the wax candles with the battery operated light inside because you don't have to worry then about any particular fire hazard so I'm going to take this indoors and I'll show you a few photographs up, up close the next tip I've got for you is a simple how-to on gift wrapping 
And the easiest way to wrap presents at Christmas or any time of the year is to put your gift inside a box. And it's much easier to wrap a regular shape than something that is all lumpy and bumpy. Now, you'll see me here using some recycled paper. And this reminds me of my dad. He always used to wrap my mum's presents up in the colour supplements. And we thought he was just awful. But obviously, he was ahead of his time with his recycling. So choose some pretty paper, either something from your Sunday papers, or as you can see with the dotted paper at the side, that came from a supermarket wrapped bunch of flowers. I actually ironed this paper, but you can still see the crease in the middle. But we are recycling and reusing, and so you just have to accept some of the imperfections. If you wanted crisp new paper, you would of course have to use crisp new paper. The trick for crisp wrapping is to measure off how much wrapping paper you need. So you need to sort of do a dummy run first of all, how much paper you need to go around the width of your packet and then how much excess you need on the sides as well. So you haven't got lots of lumps and bumps. So when you have measured out the width of the parcel, trim your wrapping paper and then save the rest of it for another gift. Using double-sided sticky tape is handy too, so you can't see any unsightly tape marks on the top of your package. So wrap your paper around and then peel off your sticky tape. And this is one that comes in a reel, so it's got no backing paper to it. And I've attached that direct to the box and then bring over the section of paper the other side. I like to turn over the edge just so you get a really crisp line. Just looks really, really neat that way. So add a second piece of tape to hold your fold in place and then bring that up to the top of the package. And then you'll see that lovely crisp line. And then the next thing to do is to do your traditional folding in at the edges. So again, I've made sure there isn't too much overhang of paper. You see me there making the edges of the wrapping paper really crisp. And then it's these folds where I come down along the side of the box, create a nice crisp fold, come out and mark the side pieces, that triangular area there on both sides, and then tuck those in and fold it up and hide another piece of tape inside and then of course do exactly the same thing at the other end of the box. And in the event you do get any paper overhanging the edge, I'm not quite sure you can see me doing it there but I've just folded in a tiny bit of the paper, I've obviously mismeasured somewhere and then add in the tape and flip the flap back up to the side of your box. I'm sure you could probably use less tape than I have once you've had a bit more practice. And there you have the neatly finished end of the package. I'm sure professional gift wrappers wouldn't be very impressed, but I think the trick here is to always put your gift inside the box, measure off as accurately as you can the paper, and just do everything as smoothly as possible without too many chunky overhangs and excess paper that you need to tuck away. And then as a finishing touch, I have wrapped over with baker's twine going over lots of times just to make a real feature. And then I am going to tuck in some dried flowers. So this is perfect for when you're going to hand a gift personally to somebody, but obviously not so good if you're going to post a gift. But it's so lovely being able to add some floral flourishes to your gift giving. For this project, I'm taking a vintage windowsill vase and doing a really simple arrangement using the baubles that I added sticks to in one of the earlier segments. You see me here packing out the bottom of my vase using old plastic bags and crumpled bubble wrap. I'm putting this in so that it'll give my moss, my pieces of moss, a bit of a lift and that way I won't need so much of it. And once you've filled the top surface with moss, you can start to get creative with your baubles. So here you can see me adding them in. I've shortened them down and I've cut them to a sharp point so they slide more easily through the moss and bury their ends into the plastic bag. I'm starting off with a mix of green, taking some of the matte ones with some of the glossy ones and grouping them for maximum effect and then adding in a bit of contrasting red at the same time. 
As this is quite a modern look, I'm leaving most of the surface of the moss bare and just grouping the baubles in and leaving lots of space. Are you a fan of washi tape? It's a decorative masking tape which is really easy to use to spruce up any ordinary glass bottle or jar and if you decide you don't like the decoration that you've added on it's really easy to peel off again. I'm showing you here how I've grouped together lots of different red patterned washi tapes and made each one progressively wider to create the shape of a Christmas tree with a trunk in green at the bottom and on my square cube I've got a snowflake washi tape and either side of that I've got two narrow reds as well so it's just a really easy way of adding a bit of festive cheer to any smooth sided container. And here you see me showing you two, I think they're Brickvick orange bottles. And again, I've kept the colour coordination going, but had a variety of pattern. So the green on one side and the red on the other. And really simple to do. So just start off on the bottom and pull your tape round. And if it needs a realigning, you can lift off and, and replace it. And then make sure you match up your edges when you come to finish off and then always make sure you do your beginnings and ends at the same side of the bottle so you've got a definite front and back and you can just twist the bottle around and all the fixing pieces can be at the back. And for this next little DIY I'm sprucing up some paper and fabric napkins using some Christmas stars and a bit of fresh greenery. Taking my fabric napkin first, it's already been ironed into a square, so it's been divided into four, and then I'm folding it again into thirds, just so it's a tiny bit narrower, and then taking my baker's twine, cutting some off and wrapping that round the middle of the napkin. These stars on sticks came from the supermarket. I think I bought five of them in a pack. And if you're careful, you can wobble the star off the end of the stick and then use that as a standalone decoration, which if you're careful, you can thread through the lattice work with some of your twine and tie that onto your napkin. What I'm doing here is just moving the star into the middle of the piece of twine and then crisscrossing it backwards and forwards and you decide whether you want to cinch your napkin in to give it a bit of a waist or to leave it flat and then tie off underneath. And then for a bit more of a decorative flourish you can tie a knot in each of the fraying ends. I've decided to add a bit more decoration and taking some of my bay leaves, so these are evergreen and they'll dry out and slicing off one of those and tucking it behind just for a bit of added colour. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy setting the Christmas table for lunch. It's all about getting as much crockery, shining glassware and cutlery on the table as possible. So you can see here, I've got a large dinner plate with a napkin underneath, on top of it and then a side plate. And I'm laying out my knife and fork. Now, if you don't know how to lay a table, there's a really simple trick I'm showing you here. I'm spelling out the word F-O-R-K on my hand which corresponds with L-E-F-T, the same number of letters, so the fork goes on the left, and knife, K-N-I-F-E, is five letters, as is R-I-G-H-T, so the knife goes on the right. I'm going to add in my napkin straight across the middle of my plates. I decide not to use the red, I'm going for the white, because it picks up on the white detail of my crockery. Now this is the last DIY I'm going to share with you and it's a bit of an emergency rescue. What do you do if you haven't had time to make your own fresh drawing or go to your florist and order one? And here I've taken a, an artificial wreath I've had up in my loft for 11 months. It's got squashed and it's pretty horrible, but you can make a real difference to your wreath if you touch every single frond and shake it and waggle it back into life and you get a 3D profile rather than a flat squashed mess and if you have time you could add in some fresh greenery so I've got some conifer here which has got a lovely uh, scent to it so I'm going to chop that down into probably hand-sized pieces and fix it in between the artificial greenery by twisting it together so it holds tight and I'm just showing you here that as you touch and manipulate the greenery it does scent off that lovely piney scent 
And to me, nothing quite says Christmas, apart from blue pine, than the black berries of the tree ivy. You can use whatever evergreen greeneries you've got to hand. And we have quite a big bay tree in the garden. So again, I'm using bay here. Another evergreen will last really well. So I start off by trimming all my greenery down to size. And I normally go for something that is about you know, palm sized. So just manageable lengths, grouping them together in my hand and then making little bunches that I will tie in to the artificial wreath. And then you need to set up a little production line, taking each of your greeneries, making a little bundle and then adding them into the to the wreath. So if you bury them down into the heart of the wreath and find two of the fronds of the artificial greenery, which are on pieces of wire and twist them together. It's a bit like the old fashioned twist ties that used to get on bread bags and that will hold them in place. And then you get your next bunch of greenery and place it over the stems of the previous bunch and that way you'll get a bit of the the um, natural element to the artificial as well and it just works really well together. Keep adding your greenery going in the same direction the whole time and you'll soon have something that just looks a million times better than the sad old crushed door wreath that came out of your loft. You can leave it like that, very natural and plain or add in pine cones or a jazzy ribbon if that's your taste. I'm going to add in some pine cones and I'm taking a green pipe cleaner and I need to be able to fix the pine cones in. So I'm going to run the pipe cleaner around the bottom of the of the pine cone and create little legs. And again, I'll use the leftover legs of the pipe cleaner to tie that in to the wreath and it'll be really, really secure. You could use a glue gun to do this, but I like being able to reuse my pine cones from year to year without them having a great big dollop of glue on the bottom. When you've got all your pine cones wired up or with little legs on them, I position them first of all on the wreath without fixing them, just so I can get an idea of where I want to go. And I normally start by placing them in thirds across the wreath and then have little groupings around the first pine cone and that way I think the spacing looks quite natural and even and then when you're happy with what you've got quite often I take a photograph of it just to make sure I can replicate it again in real life and you may want to have a cluster of them at the bottom so it's entirely up to you whether you have them spaced out around the ring or just create an accent area. So you'll need to bury down into the reef and find your way down to the metal ring that the artificial greenery is fixed on and then make the, the two legs of your pine cone go either side of the, the ring base and twist them on the bottom underneath and give it a quick waggle when you've done that just to make sure nothing falls off. So do you prefer your door wreath with a ribbon bow or leave it plain? So if you do like to add a ribbon in, you need to scroll back to the section where I showed you how to make this simple bow and then take a pipe cleaner and create legs again so you can tie that round the central frame of the artificial wreath and that will be the finishing touch and you decide which part of the wreath you want your bow to be on. Do you want it to be at the bottom, so at 6 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, off to one side, it's entirely up to you. I hope you enjoyed those quick tips and tricks and I'll catch up with you next time.